this is where the fun begins. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Thursday Morning Coffee Chat, and I am happy to start up a new era of comics, and I have my co-host here, Stig. How are you doing this fine morning? I'm doing quite well. Nice. Uh, just had a, a very late breakfast. Very late. Uh, That's, you know, breakfast it was, it was healthy, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, breakfast at any time is just sometimes it's like that comfort food that you just need. So, yeah. yeah, and I am drinking Exotic Fanta, which is okay. uh, a red soda, made, a red from, soda. made from tropical fruit. Awesome. And what's in my mug? And this is very appropriate today. So we're getting into the rebellion era of the comics, the rebellion comics. And so I have my Darth Vader mug here and I'm wearing a cantina shirt, small size cantina shirt along with this as well to celebrate the the era that we're coming into um i'm so. actually wearing um something related to star wars oh my god really yeah i have a a shirt with the the box cover of a monkey island 2 which was oh. a point and click adventure game made by lucasfilm or yeah, rather right. uh, it was made right after they turned it into lucas arts yeah so early 90s it was also the first pc game i ever bought with my own money Oh, wow. Nice. So All right. A friend of mine had the shirt made for me for my uh, 40th birthday. Yeah. So I'm wearing it proudly. Pretty, pretty it's cool. It's got a that's zombie pirate on it with a voodoo doll. Oh, that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. I wish you could see it. So we have Zagrat315. Howdy. And you spelled my name wrong, darling. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you spell her name right, you fuck. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah and steeg <laughs> and then of course miss lady toriel and um um good morning Blah. let's see here and then let's see here we have miss martin muses whoops that's not her because it jumped sorry about that and uh, miss martin muses with her handshake and her rose her little signature greeting right there so if anybody tries to turn your thing into a parody and they don't understand your your opening when you come in to greet everybody, we would know it's not you. Or it's yeah, because of that. And well, then now, now you told it though, so now everyone will know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> and then Renny A. Good morning, lovely people. Good morning to you. And then Terminus. Good morning. I see everybody's popping in. And then I already have a Super chat. Why, thank you so much, Cultures Casino. And good morning to you. And um, of course, the question of the the chat and of the morning is what's in your mug? What are you enjoying um, sipping on? And even, you know, maybe munching on, snacking on, just share in the um, in the chats. So we have need another cup of coffee so I can lurk and work while listening to two of my favorite Star Wars peeps. Well, thank you so much for listening in as you work. Just don't get in trouble, okay? You know what? He should do a, a super chat like that when there's three people on the panel. Because then everyone will think, am I the one that isn't part of those two? <laughs> Have that like, <laughs> oh my God. Someone's like confident levels goes down. <laughs> yeah. Who was it he didn't mention? Yeah. Was he not talking about me? Why not? <laughs> And then Max Anderson, hello all, and good morning to you. And then I think he kind of agrees, like laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> all right. So I'm very happy we, we've we so far closed for now the Clone Wars era until the new omnibus or the new collection comes out and that's in December. So oh, and there's, uh, there's a new Menace Revealed coming out too. That's right. Yeah, and, and that's the ones we started with, the Menace Revealed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, we're going to have to probably jump back. Um, yeah, I'm going to jump back okay. for a couple of... Well, it could be that there's a lot of shit comics in there, though. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, well, we'll review on that and make our decisions on which way we want to go on that and um, yeah. and have fun and expand well, it. Almost half of the... Well, a third of the Clone Wars omnibus that's coming out in December mm -hmm. uh, is the Revenge of the Sith comics. 
So yes. this is the end of the Clone Wars. Yes. And those are fun. So um, did you want to review the Revenge of the Sith comics? Yeah? No. No? You're like, no. <laughs> That's a very stern no. <laughs> well, it's it's the same as the movie, except for uh, you get to see, spoiler, Quinlan Voss get shot by a tank. Mm -hmm. But he survives. Yeah. Yeah. He does. All right, so um, Hell, Jordan, Forever. Um, I really want a Tales of the Jedi epic collection, but I cannot wait for the next volume of um, Menace Revealed. Love, Quinlan, and Ayla Secura. Right on, yes. Um, I'm, I'm uh, in full agreement with him. I want the Tales of the Jedi, too. I mm -hmm. think they might happen in the Dawn of the Jedi okay. um, collection. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, though. Um, I'm not, um, my memory of that timeline isn't that good, but, you know, they they should do them because there's, you get all the old Sith Lords and Nomi Sunrider and stuff. Yeah. You know? All the fun classics from that era. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to jump all the way back in time right there to, to, that, to that time frame too. Ouch. Er. All right. So let's see here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the. Um, I have an eagle rider in the chat too. An eagle rider. Okay, I'll take a look. Hold on. Let me go ahead and let's see here. All right, there's the comic right there. Very colorful, very, um, I guess you could say primary colors. So it draws your eyes. And let's see here. And oh, it jumped. Yeah. And, uh, and good day. The Thank you. Omnibuses. These omnibuses are uh, still fairly easy to get. On yeah. eBay, and you can sometimes find them on Amazon too. Yeah. And they are worth it. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, I was like researching a little bit of this. Um, and of course, this is Dark Horse Comics. And um, these are said no. to have um, replaced. No, this is yeah, this is Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just noticed the Marvel in the top corner, but it's yeah, that's because they're publishing it. Yeah, Marvel's publishing it, but originally this is Dark Horse Comics, and um, so I was researching a little bit of this um, for today, and basically what they said is these comics for the Rebellion and stuff like that are you know are basically canon replacing what Marvel did a, a while back. And that goes to what Stig says, like with the old, the beginning Marvel comics they did with Star Wars, those became non-canon. Um, and these are the ones that replaced them. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the uh, old comics from the 80s, uh, which was uh, 107 comics. Mm -hmm. uh, they were never canon. It was just something Marvel did. They leased the rights to, to Star Wars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dark Empire was written to be a follow-up mm. to those comics. And uh, yeah. it got scrapped because Marvel canceled that comic line. So yeah. Dark Empire was, it, it was kind of written, almost finished, but it yeah. was just, it, it hadn't been used. And then Dark Horse um, got the rights to Star Wars and they wanted to release something fairly fast. And the writer mm -hmm. pitched them the Dark Empire one. And it was supposed to be released as a one-off comic, kind of a little bit like uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which is yeah. a book that was written to to be a sequel mm -hmm. to Star Wars if Star Wars had failed. Yeah, exactly. Hello, Subhuman84. I hope you're doing well and you're being safe on your um, while you work. <clears throat> this this man gets around. He's his work takes him all over the United States. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I bet, I bet he gets to see a lot of cool stuff. He probably does, and probably some weird stuff too. Because like when we travel, when my family, when um, we travel like between California and South Dakota and Colorado and stuff to visit family and friends and stuff, there are some crazy stuff we see on the road as well. It's 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 a crazy but fun world out there. I've, so, I've seen a lot of uh, you know when Christy used to do those people at Walmart. Strange, yeah, <laughs> I, I've uh, gotten an impression of the United States that. Uh, <laughs> It never is never gonna change. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's not a good way to introduce someone, a foreigner to the United States, is by having them watch those kind of things and seeing those kind of things. 
It's um, well, it's um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's all we're going to say about that. All right, so let's get started in here. And so, of course, we are in the rebellion era, and this is basically um, in the shadow of Yavin. So this is two about two months after Yavin. Two months after yeah. Yavin. And two months the after the empire got blown. Yeah, yep, exactly. Got blown. <laughs> and um, so we have them. They're scouting. Um, we have Wedge. We have Luke. And guess what? We have Leia in the X-Wing. And they are scouting yeah. for a new base. And look at this gorgeous artwork, though, if, if you zoom in a bit. Okay, where do you want me to zoom in at? Just I'll anywhere? Just, or? Oh, yeah, just the page. Okay. Yeah, like all the details with the stars and yeah, the glowing the planet there. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yep. And there's Leia right there. Look at that. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Yep. Miss Leia. And she's a badass in these comics. And and oh, there's you've gonna... seen nothing yet. Oh, I know. I know that. I mean, this is like leading up to some great stuff of hers. And so this is why I don't, you know, get the rhetoric that has been going on for now at seven years now about um you know, female leads and stuff, because she alone, she is the first woman of Star Wars, right? Because she's yeah. the, the one of the main protagonists and stuff. And so people come up with the conclusion that there was no women protagonists and strong leads and blah, blah, blah. They can kiss my butt because they have not obviously read these comics or gotten to the lore or even friggin' watched the movies. Seriously. Yeah, and uh, I'd argue that Mon Mothma as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a very strong female. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't do all the you know the action heavy stuff, but uh, the 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 rebels would be dead if it wasn't for her. Actually, it wouldn't even be a thing. No, because she's the one. She's one of the main founders. Yeah, Bale is even a main founder, but he had to step aside because he had <clears throat> he took Leia. Yeah, so he had to yeah, protect he had to her. Bail. Yeah, he had to bail. Basically, he had to bail and be you know um, in the foreshadows. I guess you could say. Um, you know, and um, we all know the story, but, you know, it's just funny how the state of Star Wars is today. And so this is why we're here today, just to show, share the beautiful part of Star Wars, the original lore. So let's move on. So oh, and, there's... Uh, and uh, for those of you watching, mm -hmm. uh, it would be cool if you guys got a, a an old galaxy map of, of Star Wars oh, yeah. so you could see where the characters are, because now they're in the, the Dominus sector in the Outer Rim. Yeah. So it, it's kind of cool to, you know, when we're doing the stories, you can you can look at the map and see, okay, they're close to this and that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Relatively close. It's in space, but you know. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for a new home because they can't go back to Yavin Four. Yeah. Yeah. And they're looking at this one. They're like, "This is no Dantooine," and blah 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 blah. You know, so they're they're scouting and stuff like that. And um, you know, and. You know, Luke has been very quiet, and this goes into a lot of like heaviness between what they had experienced in um, from Yavin and losing, you know, you know, um, friends from you know Yavin and friends from before then and family from before then and stuff. So they they're traveling with heavy hearts here. Yeah, they're homeless and on the run. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then, um, so basically. Um, you know, they, they talk, they, you know, Luke is talking about basically t thinking about um, how everything had happened, like with Leia and with him losing his family and Wedge losing all of his people and his yeah. friends. Yeah. And uh, Luke has actually just two months ago lost Baru and Owen, who raised him. He lost mm -hmm. Ben Kenobi and he lost uh, Biggs, his childhood mm -hmm. friend. Exactly. That, that's a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and his mentor and trainer, Obi-Wan. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Leia has lost her planet and her mm -hmm. family, though you know, which were on the planet. It's uh, pretty insane. Yeah, yeah. So there's a bunch of heaviness and all this, and you know, they call her senator, and she's like, "I am not senator while I'm here. I'm just Leia. So please address me that way." So, so basically, she is, you know, she's not demoting herself, but she's making herself equal to them because they're all on the same mission and they all have the same purpose. Yeah, and she's also making herself more approachable. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, and then you see, like, dumbasses on Twitter saying, who's lost more than Ray? Uh, 
Luke and Leia. Maybe. Yeah. And Wedge, too, on that as well, because he even lost his family. If you looked at his lore in, in the original lore, he loses his family at a young oh, yeah. age, and even his sister. Yeah. You know, I mean, he does, she doesn't die. We, she, she ends up becoming a fell, but um, spoilers if you haven't known, but um, yeah. And so he, he loses things. He loses family be, you know, like just as it's tragic. They're all tragic. But the thing is, is they don't stop and cower and cry and hide. They get active. They want a better galaxy. They want better for everyone in the galaxy. So. Yeah. And if you want to read uh, the wedge story, Mm -hmm. uh, you can find them in the New Republic omnibus two and three. Yeah, because that has the uh, that one has the X Wing comics. Yes. Oh God. And so you good. get to see a lot so of cool uh, stuff with Winter as well. Yeah, because she's basically a female James Bond at the time. Oh yeah, she's oh yeah, she's badass. Winter is badass. But let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. All right. So basically they um, they're still searching and they're still they're still talking about their loss and stuff, but then also staying um, on task as well. Um, you know, you and know what they, mm -hmm. they could do like a, a Star Wars porn crossover yeah. with Game of Thrones and call oh, it Lord. Winter is Coming. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, carry on. <laughs> oh goodness. What did my chat say about that? <laughs> Nothing. They, they approve. They approve. And I have Matt <clears throat> in here with a super sticker, so I'll go ahead and get that going before it disappears. Um, I'm pretty sure it's probably a Dumacorn. Maybe. I don't have the sticker in front of me or the thing in front of me. But thank you so much for the 149 super sticker. And thank again, all of you guys are amazing. And I'm glad you guys are here sharing and enjoying um, Star Wars with us. All right, and let's see here. Anybody else has jumped on? All right, let's get this little super sticker out of the way so we don't block any anything. It's tiny, but still. All right, let's go back. So, um, you know, they, they talk about looking forward to these long trips because they have plenty of time to think and contemplate and mourn and stuff, but let's go ahead and move on. And then lo and behold, bam, they um, a Star Destroyer comes out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, with uh, and they point out that they also have TIE interceptors, Correct. which are uh, better than the TIE fighters. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody was supposed to know they were there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. And it, like they, they are totally taken in shock and surprise, as you can see faces there. And, you know, of course, there's only three of them. And, you know, Leia's not a gr as good of a pilot as her brother. I still give her credit on being a good pilot or whatever, but she's not as good as Wedge and, um, you know, and Luke. No. And right now in this time period, Luke is still um, under Wedge and piloting skills right now. Yeah, so and right I, under him. I would say that uh, Wedge is the better pilot ever mm -hmm. because he doesn't use the force exactly and that's why i love wedge because he doesn't use the force and he he can hang with luke using the force you know at times and um yeah so that's why i, I love wedge as well and um so basically they get they get i <clears> was maybe ambushed a little bit because they're not supposed to know you know they are you know basically incognito or whatever, whatever you want to call it no one's supposed to know their mission and bam they are found Mm -hmm. And they can't hyperspace away yet. Not because yet. The Tie Fighter, uh, the the Star Destroyer is in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a so, great concept, right? Because they are in the hyperspace lane; they can't leave. Exactly. So. You have to get behind them and then jump. Exactly, and that's a thing in Star Wars. You know, there's there's rules in world building, right? <laughs> yeah, used to be. <laughs> used to be. <clears throat> right here, there is. <clears throat> right here, it makes sense. So yeah, you know, Leia looks badass in that pilot outfit. She does. Look at her, and she's got her red yeah. lipstick on and everything. Look at that. Yeah. Hello there. <laughs> and so you know, they start taking. She has action. a firm grip on that flight stick, though. She does. She's she is. Um... She's proficient with the flight stick. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, she's like I said, they're taken by surprise. They, you know, start, you know, engaging in combat because, you know, that's, you know, that, that's what they need to do and stuff. And, um, 
it's like three of them against all of, you know, all these interceptors and, you know, ties and, you know, and what have you. And even though like Luke, I think it was Luke, our wedge said that, you know, well, they're dealing with us. So we, we could still, we still have a chance, but yeah, still. That, 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 uh, <laughs> that grip on the flight stick is uh -huh. actually foreshadowing. It's hinting at a happy ending. So I, I, th I think they're going to survive. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> All right. So here we go. She does get hit or her, her flight stick, her joystick, her joystick. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways. So she gets hit. Um, <clears throat> I think that the, her, um, her flight stick does um, lose its engagement as well. So she can she gets, loses control. And, yeah, um, limp and, uh, <laughs> she, she lost control and she's crashing into the uh, the planet. Correct. <laughs> I'm like trying to avoid all this rhetoric that we're going into, but it's impossible. <laughs> Darn you, Stig. <laughs> yeah, she the the flight stick went limp and now she's going down. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so she she does gain control a little bit to where she um, she is able to land it safely. I guess you can say without you know explosions and stuff. And of course, she gets out. She's ready to go. Look at her. And this, the way she's holding the rifle is weird. Uh huh. Because she's kind of like aiming, but she's not looking into the scope. It just looks weird. So yeah. A little bit of criticism there. Yeah. Maybe she's, she's not really, like ready to aim. Maybe she's like scouting, but she's holding it up. But why would she be holding it without looking into the scope? She's she's holding it like a girl. It's stupid. Oh my god! I don't hold my guns like that. Well, she is. Okay. Anyway, uh... <laughs> I think the I think the um, the art artist didn't really think about that. They just thought it looked like a badass picture for her. Yep. You know, because she's 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 trained to use these blasters and stuff. So yeah, I get what you're saying though. It's like, you know, if you're gonna if you're ready and poised to um aim and shoot, you should be looking through the scope, right? Yeah. And there we go. So she is partly looking through the scope right here and looking. So there's a little bit credit towards that. Um yeah, but the and she TIE fighter, the TIE fighter uh mm -hmm. pilot. Um, mm -hmm. I always thought the TIE fighter pilots look cool. Yeah. So the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, look at this last picture though. She shoots him and then executes him in the face. <laughs> oh, badass. She's like, yeah. I'm making sure you're twice. dead. <laughs> yeah, twice. She shoots him twice in the head, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, pretty harsh. He's not very light side of her. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah but hey shoots you him in, gotta... shoots him in the chest and then twice in the head mm -hmm. when he's down that's uh yep yeah but when you're the only one there you'll, and you uh, have to do, you'll, take care uh, of yourself huh you'll never be the head of the squadron never he won't even have, have heart to even think about it yeah he got it off his chest there we go <laughs> all right and here we go so now we go back to the rebel fleet and we get to um, and I remember two when uh, that guy who made rebels said that the, the rebels didn't have a fleet. Mm -hmm. Oh God, that's right. Huh? Yeah. There it is. The rebel yeah. fleet. Mm -hmm. Which you also see some of in rogue one. I think you also see it in the friggin' movies. But that's before yeah. that. That's after you know that the rebels. But still, they've always had a fleet. Yeah, always. I don't know. These people just. It, 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 I'm not surprised anymore with the level of idiocity that happens within Disney Star Wars. I'm not surprised. Uh, well, this yeah, this was yeah yeah rebels that with Disney. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who's responsible for rebels? Oh, I don't know. The savior of Star Wars. <laughs> you would think that this person, the so-called savior, who people say that is the apprentice to the creator of Star Wars, would know this shit, right? Oh, you'd think. You'd think. All right, let's get back where, let's get back to this. So we were at the Rebel Fleet. We have Han and Chewie. And um, 
you know, they're packing up some, I guess, the re some reward money and they're talking yeah. about their situation still. Yeah. yeah, this is the reward money they had uh, after, uh, you know, uh, saving the princess. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Han wants to uh, go to the black market and, and spend some. And he's being cocky, too, because uh, he has Jabba on his, on his tail, but he's not, not afraid of him yet. No, he's not. And um, we, we're still seeing Han with his, oh. Um, oh, and, his uh, and his um, selfishness, I guess you could say, in a sense. Oh, and, and there's an uh, there's a kill on site uh, reward money um, for uh, well, it's it's a bounty on him from from the from the Empire as well. Yeah, because he's right. associated with the Rebel Alliance. And it's mm -hmm. on all imperial worlds. Mm -hmm. So when I, whenever someone say the Empire didn't know who, well, you know what Luke and the others looked like, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And he even says right here that he's basically black mark black marked on every single planet in the basically in the galaxy just about because of the Empire and because of Jabba. Yeah. So you yeah. know this goes you know like um, you know um, you know like um, what's his name. Um, that Baba, that Baba guy that gets his arm shot up. Um, oh, Ponda Pond, Ponda Baba. Ponda Bonda. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm getting the name all friggin' mixed up. But yeah, where they, they, him and his partner was talking about how they're, you know, wanted in 12 systems and blah, blah, blah. Well, I think Han broke the record here. <laughs> oh, they're wanted in 12 systems for, for killing a couple of people. Mm -hmm. What do you think blowing up the Death Star would get you? Exactly. <laughs> You know, that's, and so it makes it more difficult, but Han's like, I'm going to meet this head on. This is going to be exciting. Yeah. And Chewie is skeptical. Yeah. Chewie's like, what the hell do you think that you're, do, you know, taking us and stuff? And you can see Chewie's face right here. He's like confused. He's like, what, 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 you know, kind of deal. Yeah. You know. Quite often in Star Wars, Chewie is smarter than the others. Yeah. No, nobody seems to notice that, but he is. He is. And, um, you know, like nowadays he's treated just as the Uber driver and pets. That's all. Yeah. But in the original lore, he has a lot of character. He has a lot of reasoning. He is, you know, you know, he, he's true to, he is his nature as a Wookiee and all that. And yeah. And they're still sentient yeah. beings. They're still like humanoid in a sense. And, you mm -hmm. know, just because we don't understand doesn't mean that he doesn't have, you know, intelligence and stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, he fixes ships. Mm -hmm. It's a mechanic. Of course he's smart. You know? Exactly. It, it's, he's not a dog. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's a person, and his name is Chewie. Yeah. Chewie, Wookie lives matter. Chewie, Chewie's lives matter. <laughs> lives matter. <laughs> there we go. And um, so, you know, basically, they want to, you know, take off and stuff. And they do get um, a summon by Mon Mothma, Mon Mothma on a mission. So. Yeah. Uh, they uh, She wants uh, them to check in on the designated. Uh, what the heck? Something. Um, I didn't write it down. So I didn't. I forgot to write it down. Well, if you zoom in, you'll see it. Where is it? Redemption, clear, depart, redemption, million. Would like to re remind you to check at the designated times to and keep it to your schedule, Falcon. So, um, yeah, there's rules. Don't stay mm -hmm. away from too for too long and uh, check mm -hmm. in and you know. Yeah, yeah. She wants and, to know what they're doing at all times and stuff because, and he even states here that he's a part of the rebellion now. Yeah. So. Um, you know, even though he's been fighting it and he needs to, um, but as we see him going into Empire Strikes Back, he does realize that, um, you know, that he needs to take care of business with Jabba to get him off his back because that compromises a lot of things for him and his friends as well. So, and so they start, they get ready to take off. And of course they go into hyperspace here. And um, here we go. So, Basically, the um, they meet up with Leia and oh, the, uh, look at that burning Tie Fighter. Where have you seen that before? Yeah, I was going to point that out last night on Twitter, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, hmm, this looks quite familiar, <laughs> you know. But this one, I think, has a better story behind it than anything else. 
Yeah, it, well, it has a story. <laughs> yeah, it has a story, a story, and it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and you have R two uh, fixing uh, R two and Luke fixing uh, Leia's ship because um, mm -hmm. it's it's damaged, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of shit, you know. the The Tie Fighter is now non-existent. It's like going up in flames and ashes and stuff. And you know they're taking care of um, Leia's ship and stuff. But basically, they tell her that it's it's fixed. But you know she still needs to, um, you know, um, warm it up. I guess you could say before they take off and stuff. And um, still be cautious because it's not fully. I wouldn't say fully operational, but there's still things that needs to be taken care of within the ship. So. And then, of course, they sense something here, like they're talking and Luke's being kind of like snide or whatever with her, or they're having some kind of banter here. And Luke, you know, she's telling him to stop. And she was like, I was just just kidding, basically. And she's like, hush. And they hear, and this happens in Tatooine Goes too. But basically, the they are they are setting a grid out to search for them in the TIE Fighters. So they're they're in search of of the three of them on the planet, and so Wedge realizes that, and he takes out the 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 binox to take a look. Yeah, there's a, a tie bombers coming yes. closer. Yeah. Standard procedure. They're gonna scan and bomb. If they find something. Exactly. Yep. So they have to haul ass. Yeah, and so she can She has to basically start um, cold start her X wing to take off, which isn't very um, reliable with her with the condition of her ship. Yeah, and there's uh, bad flying conditions to uh, electrical storms. Exactly, exactly. So they like they're they have like the odds are against them and stuff here, you know. And um, you know, and they, you know, they, they don't want to lose her either. They don't lose each other basically. But you know, she's like pivotal to the rebellion as well because she's one of the the leaders, I guess you can say. And you could still see the blood on her face. So I don't know if that was just injury from her crash or just from her shooting. No. I don't know. It's from when she shot the guy in the face twice. It's yeah. probably blood, blood splatter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, look at her face. <laughs> yeah, she She's didn't. Ha she didn't have it when uh, she saw mm -hmm. him. Shot him. So it's uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, you have a super chat. Oh, okay. Let me take a look. Let's see here. All right, and then we have Darius um, Munchausen. Hello, 149 super sticker. Thank you so much. I don't have um, I don't have the regular stream in front of me, so I can't see what the super sticker is, but it's greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get back to the comic here. And yeah, so they take off. She has to do a um, quick cold start, I guess you could say, and um, and they take off. As quickly as yep. they can. And then here we go. I think she looks pretty badass in her flight suit, really. I think she does. Yeah. And then they uh, go into well above the planet and jump to hyperspace. But what mm -hmm. happened to the Star Destroyer, though? That's what I was thinking, too. Did it, did they, shouldn't have been still in being that hyperspace lane? Or did it move to the area where they crashed so that they could set out their tie? bombers um to find them i don't know yeah that that was my thinking last night when i was um reading because i was like okay so they're jumping into hyperspace but didn't that type didn't the star destroyer wasn't it blocking their way in the hyperspace lane so yeah oh, so who it, knows it, it had it had moved well, well they, they were probably on the planet for a while though yeah but still you know the tie bombers would need the star destroyer Exactly. The only thing I can think of that happened is that it just moved locations and atm atmosphere, maybe. Who know. knows? That that's that's one thing. I was like, hmm. Okay. Well, they they kind of missed the ball on this one, but it does happen. You know, it's just and they needed them to leave. <laughs> kind of convenient, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of convenient. So, yeah. So they head head back to home one. Um, the rebel flagship of Mon Moth Amon Mothmas, the commander. Um. um Akbar, Akbar as well. So they um, they start heading back that way, you know, and um, you know this these little boxes here I like. It says Luke Skywalker, child of Tatooine, student of the deceased Jedi Ben Kenobi, hero of the Battle of Yavin, as a pilot second only to Wedge Antilles. So this this is what I was talking about earlier. So right now he's still he's still inexperienced because he hasn't been with them very long. 
it's only two months in from our after Yabin. So, and, and I get it, you know, you still have to progress in your training and stuff. It was a thing. It's, it was a thing in star Wars. You still had to build yourself up, you know, and um, train and all that as a Jedi, as a pilot, you know, what have you. So there we go. So there's my little rant, just a little one. And so they're back at the, um, the redemption here and, you know, Leia, Leia lands and stuff like that. And so basically she just tells him, you know, my ship needs to be worked on, what have you. And he is kind of snide to her a little bit. Did you notice that, Stig, how, how he was talking to her? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, so basically he's like, um, he's calling her princess. And basically he's like, she doesn't, he tells Luke she's, um, you know, she's she doesn't this is not her thing. She doesn't belong as a pilot and whatever. And Luke was like, she downed a tie interceptor and um, on foot on a um, alien world planet, you know, so he kind of sticks up for Leia here. So um, yeah. So I thought that was kind of crazy there, but I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, so she goes and meets Mon Mothma, Mon Mothma here. And this is where it gets kind of heavy here because Mon Mothma really is noticing that, their emotions are always being intercepted by the empire. And so she thinks that there's a spy or something going on. And so basically she sets up um, three three PO to do some covert things of like help planning missions and stuff like that. And she, mom, Mothma doesn't want to know anything about anything that's going on, like what she's put in the assignment on Leia to do because she's worried that it's going to get out somehow. So kind of like a covert kind of mission going on here. So, and they reprogram, you know, C-3PO for that as well. So, and then she hands over the data cards and um, and all of that. And she's all, she's all C-3PO has been outfitted with a military grade security and inscription packages programmed to, um, to respond to your voice and personal codes. He'll be your aide. And um, so, yeah, so it's getting heavy because they don't, they need to find out and figure out who is, you know, leaking their missions out to the empire, how they're finding out and what have you. So, and they are in dire straits here because they're low on fuels, they're low on food, all of this, because not only did the empire receive a big blow of losing the Death Star, the, um, a lot of systems, a lot of planets, even though they side with the re the rebellion, still are not allowing them to um, seek refuge on their planets. Yeah. Well, so uh, I need to correct myself. The okay. blood on her face was her own because she's now having a little Band-Aid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right there, Band-Aid. There you go. Okay. It was. It sounds kind of nice in a way, kind of savage for her to have blood splatter on her from her <laughs> blasting him, though. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You sound kind of disappointed there. Yeah, I was <laughs> disappointed. You're like, damn it. <laughs> I thought she was really savage. And we get into this here. So we are at the um, Kuat system in the core worlds, and we have Vader communicating with his master. And um, well, and, uh, the Kuat system is where they build ships. Correct. Correct. One of them, anyway. The biggest yeah. one, I guess. The, yeah, the Kuat's the biggest one, and then we have Corellian um, sh um, shipyards too. But I mean, I think Kuat's the the main shipyard. You know what I always thought was weird with uh, Vader and Palpatine. Okay. Uh, Vader says, "You know what? What is what is thy bidding, my master?" Right. Mm -hmm. Why does he use the word "thy"? He doesn't speak Shakespeare English at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just how that was written. But you know, they, you know, they there was like um talk, and I think George even mentioned like part of the arc in the PT, not the OT though, was a little bit of a Shakespearean kind of essence between, you know, um Vader and Padme or Anakin and Padme. But um with that, I have no idea. That's how it was written. I've wondered that a few times as well. So maybe because it sounds um, yeah, it's just like a knight talking to a king, really. Yeah. You know, but still, it's an odd mm -hmm. choice of word, given yeah. how he speaks in general. 
Yeah. How do you think that should be rephrased then, Stieg? What is your bidding? Uh-huh. Or what do you want me to do, damn it? No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's too layman right there. <laughs> too ghetto. All right. So we have them, um, you know, commu communicating back and forth here. And the thing is, he, um, Sidious, is pissed off at Vader right now. Yeah. Because uh, Tarkin is dead and the Death Star is gone. Mm -hmm. He's like, I do not need to be reminded of Tarkin because he's, you know, like you failed me. And he's like, well, what about Tarkin? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I do not need to be reminded of Tarkin. He goes, if you, you know, if you didn't enter, if you would have intercepted Tarkin's decision, we wouldn't be in the situation basically. Yeah. And, um, uh, Tarkin, uh, was incredibly con competent, um, uh, not on rebels because He's an idiot on Rebels, but in mm -hmm. Disney canon, he was uh, no, sorry, in, in Lucas canon, he was uh, he was a big loss. Yeah, he was. Yep. So he's pinning all of this. He's like, if you would have stopped Tarkin, we wouldn't be in this situation, and we would still have one of the best, you know, moths, grand moths ever, still in under my hands, you know, and intelligence and stuff like that. So he's putting a lot on Vader right here. Yeah. So, a lot. Well, it was Vader's plan to let them escape with, uh, with, with the plans to, to lead them to Yavin. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it didn't work. And uh, he actually tried that on Rebels as well. Same oh. trick. He let the Jedi escape to lead them to the Rebels. Oh, God. And then they killed a couple of A-Wings, and that's it. So it kind of failed there, too. Which means he was dumb in episode four for trying it again. Yeah. Yeah, they really dumbed down a lot of characters in Rebels, didn't they? Like a lot of the villains were dumbed down. Holy crap. And here we have right here, these villains here, you know, the, the true Sidious and Vader and stuff like that. Look at this right here. You know, yeah. they're, they're not dumbed down. And we have the most threat in the galaxy, Sidious, you know, shaming the one that's the visible threat to the universe because everybody cowers and fears of Vader. Even his own, um, even his own um, troops and his own um, subordinates and stuff. You know, they sh basically shake in their boots when Vader's around and stuff. And yeah. so he's like kneeling to Sidious, getting chastised basically for his yeah. mistakes. Now that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And then so. he gets beaten by Doctor Apra. <laughs> Oh God. Yeah. You know, if you like Disney Star Wars, enjoy that. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with how dumbed down these villains have been in the new Disney lore. So anyways, so we have them right here. He's kneeling right here. And so basically he says, yeah, I'm taking your star destroyer away, away from you and giving it to, um, um, Colonel Britcher. So yeah. basically, he demoted him. He took him out of his element. He took his superstar destroyer away from him. Yeah, he's and this is like two months after Yavin. Yeah, he's being punished. Mm hmm. Yep. And the Colonel Bircher is um, apparently an up-and-coming um, imperial mm -hmm. soldier, basically, or an officer. Yeah. Yeah, and what he what Sidious says is like for one, so young, he is quite capable. He almost reminds me of you, Lord Vader, Vader, but with a record still unblemished by failure. Damn, that freaking stings. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. And and see, you notice how he doesn't really go and force choke him or anything? Because there is this like control going on right here. If this was anybody else talking shit to Vader, he would have been dead. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. And so he sends them, he gives them a new little ship and a new little mission, but um, that's it. He, um, I forgot what little tiny ship yeah. he gave Yeah, he's, them. Uh, he's sending him out, out to redeem himself. Mm hmm. Exactly. It's like he's got to go prove himself again, you know? And um, it's, it's, it's like, this is like, Bam, you know, the control Sidious still has on everything and everyone. It's unreal. 
All right. Let's go ahead and move along. And so we have him fuming, you know, like he, they even put expression in his helmet here, which I get it. Um, I don't think they really needed to make it look that ven venomous, but, a, you know, because the helmet still looks that way, but you know, his posture and stuff, basically he's, he's seething. He is pissed. He's like, I got demoted. And then he goes and he gets to meet Britcher. And it's not, a, it's like very, very like tense right here you know, and, um, you know, that they're face to face and like, I'm pretty sure Vader's like, I wish I could just for first choke this, the hell out of this dude, but he doesn't, he keeps control right now. Yeah. And, uh, Butcher hasn't done anything really to deserve no. it. No. Mm -mm. Yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know, he's Vader's still going to keep it in the back of his mind because he's waiting for that opportunity. We know he's waiting for that opportunity. So, <laughs> There you go. And of course, he's contemplating and seething and all of this. So De Darth Vader, servant of the Emperor and the last reminder of the Order of the Jedi Knights, his imposing presence has caused junior officers to literally shake with fear. Fear is the currency Vader trades. And right now, this fear is gripping his own heart. His failure at Yavin haunts him for all the, um, the obvious reason. And one very private reason, one he takes great pain to hide from his master, the emperor. And he says Skywalker. And it is it is a word that comes unbidden to his lips. And he has yet to understand what it means. So there we go. Yeah, because <laughs> there shouldn't be another Skywalker, should it? No. Oh, and there's uh, Luke tinkering with it with a lightsaber, and Leia shows up in her uh, in her outfit. And, yeah, uh, her and uh, Soul Assassin in the chat wants to uh, you zo zoom in on Leia in her uniform. Okay, there you go. Does he think she's a babe? Oh and, yeah, uh, you guys need to check out my Twitter because I have like mother like daughter. So I have Jaina in her black um, X wing. Um, style suit, and then I have Leia in hers right here, together, back yeah. to back. It's uh, this is uh, almost like a Tie Fighter outfit. Almost, yeah. Yeah, that box on the chest is the life support. Correct. Okay. And uh, Tie Fighter pilots they'll carry a, a box with them because mm -hmm. Tie Fighters don't have uh, life support at all. They're too small. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in it. It's just you. You, you get put put in a in a tin can. Basically, yeah. it's on it mm -hmm. and, and told us a lot. Yeah, engine and wings, and that's it, huh? Right. And wish for the best. Apparently, in the new canon, they all of a sudden have uh, have uh, hyperdrives, which they didn't have before. Yeah. Which means when Han fled, uh, Han and Luke and the others fled um, Tatooine, mm -hmm. the TIE fighters could have followed them. Mm hmm. So is it early as rebels when they have the hyperdrive? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck for oh my god. And uh, they they also have life support for some mm -hmm. reason, which is kind of stupid because the Tie Fighter pilots wear those life support suits and carry yeah. the box with them, which means if there's already life support in there, it's like walking around in scuba gear inside a submarine, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of pointless. It's completely redundant. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's like they haven't watched A New Hope where, you know, they're like, why is this TIE fighter out here in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that even alludes to the TIE fighters not having hyperspace or the right proper life support for them to travel yeah. that far. Yeah, all right. And at the bottom it says, next, good guys wear black. Hmm. And then so we're going on to the next comic. Let me go ahead and take a look at the chat and see what's going on in here. Um, let's see here. I so I, far I, I, I don't ahead. like the cover of this comic. The, and I use it for the. Yeah, this is a shit, shit cover. <laughs> uh, and I used it for the the thumbnail. I know you yeah, don't approve. It looks like fan <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah. So we have Lady Toriel. Um, don't make me mad. You will pay Vader. Thinking. Yep. 
And then it's funny to see Palp so pissed off about the Death Star here because in EU, he's not that upset. This is the EU, though, correct? Yeah, I'm thinking it says in other EU. Oh, in other maybe. EU, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's talking about uh, Disney or something. Well, to be fair, he's not upset in the EU novels either. You don't really. Yeah. No. It, it just never gets mentioned. But then again, the, the books that. Uh, that he's in mm -hmm. take place quite a quite a while after the Battle yeah of Yesterday, so yeah this is two months after yeah uh, and he's still pissed but i mean the, the other novels mm -hmm. uh, palpatine is, i don't think he's in that many except shadows of the empire yeah mm -hmm. yeah Let's see here. All right. Soul Assassin Vader always has resting Sith face. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Scott Johnson. Hello. As far as we know. Yeah. So. Yep. And then OG. And then we have Darius in the OG Star Wars with a little bit of popcorn on the side there. That's what I'm guessing what that is. And then Matt G. They're, they're good too. Oh, he's chatting with someone. Yeah. Renny. Renny's in the chat. Yes, and then a Razvan, Razvan. Um, whoa. Um, so basically, you're probably talking about Leia. Yeah. Yep, flight suit. <laughs> yep, that was an awesome picture because when I when I was reviewing this with Stig, um, when we were planning for coffee chat, and I went through the whole comic with him. I'm like, oh my god, look at this, look at that. I was like friggin' nerd out zone. It was just squealing. <laughs> And then when I got to Leia, I was like, I got to make a GIF, a little um, a little graphic art with her and Jaina, both in their flight suits, their black she style. She was uh, breathing into a paper bag. <laughs> no, no, you're you're exaggerating on that one now. All no, right. There was glue in the paper bag. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, my God, Stig. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and then the flight suit does look badass. Yes, it, it does. does. It does. It's friggin' amazing. I have a Jaina Solo figure that has a suit almost like that. Yeah, so do I. I, yeah, have mine I got it from you, actually. Yes, that was the surprise to you for your... Um, your support as my co-host for coffee chats. Yeah, Alora sent me a couple of uh, uh, kind of obscure EU books, young adult books, and mm -hmm. uh, and a Jaina Solo. So here we go. Yeah. Well, look at that. Just I like took her mine mama. Out of the box, though. Yeah, I still have mine in the box, but look at that. See, just like her mama. Yeah. Look at that. Hello there. Yes, it's 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 beautiful. I love 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 this. I love yeah, James. and the face is uh, very. They, they did the face perfectly. It's like a mix between Han and Leia. Mm -hmm. Leia and Stealth X fight suit. Yes, we'll get to why, and we'll, we. This is the first time we're going to see the actual Stealth Xs. Um, let's see here, and Razvin. But where are her organs? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Let's see here. What, what, what? Okay, I don't want to block you. I'm sorry. All right. I mean, organs, organas. Where's her organas? <laughs> uh, and then, damn, she's hot. Yeah, Leia, I think, was a lot of boys' crush growing up in that time frame when, um, when Star Wars started coming out. Um, I've heard, like, even with my male cousins, I've heard all kinds of, like, crushes and stuff like that to her, especially mm. towards on um, Revenge of the Sith when she gets in that bikini. I, uh, I actually never had that. Uh, I had a crush on the Bond girl from uh, For Your Eyes Only. The one oh, yeah. The, the one with the crossbow. Yeah. Uh, Melina Havelock. That's right. And, uh, and Dana Scully later on. Oh, yeah. Dana Scully. Yeah. She was, like, the hot redhead, right? Yeah. Like they're nerdy. Well, I like I wouldn't say. Well, yeah, maybe nerdy hot, but she still doubt, doubted. Oh God, I got to get back into that series. I I used to love watching that with my grandmother. X Files is a ten out of ten. Mm hmm. It's so much fun. So much fun. We just learned OG never takes her toys out of the box. No, I don't. Well, uh, these are collectors. Um, but maybe one day I will. You know. And yeah, mine is in the shower. 
You're oh lord. No, I'm kidding. It's on the shelf next to uh, <laughs> Ken uh, General Kenobi from the Tarnovsky Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And like her purple lightsaber too. Isn't that gorgeous? Look mm -hmm. at that. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. And just like her mama, too. She's got the best of her mom and her dad. For sure. For sure. <laughs> and Rasvin, a cheese stick. <laughs> I was kidding. It's not in the oh shower. It's in my bed. Oh, my oh Lord. <laughs> Here we go. I, she's on the pillow <laughs> next to mine, and I'm, I talk to her before her sleep. No, that's Ayla. I don't have an Ayla. Oh, man. Someone needs to get him Ayla. Yeah, send me a Twilight uh, body pillow. A body pillow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, Renny, look at <laughs> Oh, Lord. This is funny. And TMI, TMI, <laughs> TMI alert going on here. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So this is um, part two. There are six parts to this um, Shadows of Yavin story. And um, so here's one of the cover arts, and here's another. Now this one's cooler though, but it, it this one looks like uh, it looks like uh, if, if they had made an animated movie, this would be yeah. the DVD cover. Oh yeah, you know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it has the father and the children right here. Look at that. Yeah, and Leia crashing another X-wing apparently. <laughs> oh yeah. So she was probably <laughs> trying to reverse park. Oh Lord, Stig. This is a good cover though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is the best one. All right. So part two of the six here. So we have Han, you know, in his in the Falcon. So we go straight to them now because we left off with um, you know, you know, the Wedge and Luke and Leia going back to um the rebel fleet. And um, now we're back with Han. So in um, Corsair, Corsair, I don't know if I said that, right, out back deep in space. And he's snoozing. And, you know, Chewie's like yelling for him. And he's like, I'm uh, awake. Well, Corsair is also uh, another word for pirate. Yeah. So it's, he's in the deep space. But, you know, if you look at the cockpit, you know, he's, he's sitting uh -huh. in there. Uh -huh. It has to be so damn peaceful, though, to just sit in that chair. Yeah. And just look out the window and just drift. Yeah. That has well, to I be mean, awesome. Yeah, imagine that though. Yes. And look at him. He's like, he's in heaven. This is he, this is his thing. He's in his element. Right there. If anything, he's in his element. And he keeps his ship for like a long time, too. Like if you get into the lore and you read, you know, way past post Return of the Jedi and stuff. Yeah. That that ship sees a lot of action. A lot. So, yeah. And then so, you know, Chewie's warning him, um, you know, on something. He's like, yeah, yeah. So what have you been um, up to while I've been waiting? <laughs> so he's been sleeping. So, <laughs> you know, and um, so Chewie's talking with him and he is, how much further do you think you can extend our sensor range anyway? We already have it modded, but we um, are 150 par, um, percent of a spec so basically they're going over somatic or over the system and stuff like that and um all that so let's go past this and lo and behold look at look at here yeah slave one mm -hmm. and he's like but who's gonna find us out here look at that yeah, yeah. who <laughs> yeah and i love i really love this picture too it's a pretty nice picture and it says, Han Solo, child of, of Corellia and once promising Imperial cadet, now to the um, not or now notorious smuggler and partner to the Wookiee Chewbacca. Solo is wanted in multiple sectors and the hut gangster Jabba has bounty on him. So this, you know, basically we see, you know, the continuation of Jabba looking for him because he still owes him money from when, you know, what happened with him dumping his spice and not fulfilling the um, his spice run for Jabba. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it's not really spice. It's more like drugs. Spice yeah. is the Star Wars drugs. Yeah, right. It's not like spice like you cook with and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So... 
There you we go. You didn't dump the pepper in Uranus. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Stig. <laughs> Oh God. All right. <laughs> and then, um, so basically he says, come on, Chewy, the um, entire um, sensor array is overloading. So of course he's always having trouble with his ships to ship. We always see something going on with it because he's modified it and stuff like that. And then lo and behold, they realize that they're being tracked and we know who it is. So boom, there we go. Slave one. They're like slave one. And you know, so they, you have to jump into action. So and um, and he saw so much for Mon, Mon Mothma's rendezvous plan, <laughs> you know, because they got spotted by Slave One, and um, you know, so of course they have to get out of that situation and um, so on. So yeah, and the Star Destroyer just jumped in, but they're uh, already oh, yeah. aligned with the hyperspace jump, so they're too far away. So they go poof. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So they get out of there, just barely get out of there. Yeah, and look at that. When you enter hyperspace towards the ship like that, uh, you don't uh -huh. ram it because they're in different space. Mm -hmm. This kind of disproves the whole those shit. Right there. Exactly. That's a, that's another thing I was thinking about last night, too. And I was like, should I post this or should we just talk about it a little bit on coffee chat? Because I was like, I pick out a lot of this stuff here, too. And um, of course, you know. They said, oh, we don't have any source material. Well, bullshit. It's right here in front of you, right here, right here. Yeah. It's, you know, if there's, you know, if the source material is there, that just proves they can't read. Mm -hmm. And judging by how they talk about stuff, they probably don't. Yeah, exactly. All right. So here we go. So we're back at the Rebel Fleet. And, um, you know, so basically we have, you know, Leia. She is going through, you know, she has all the data pads and stuff for that, um, the covert mission that um, she's given by Mon Mothma and stuff. But you see her, she's finally getting a chance to really reflect on um, on everything that has happened the last few months. You know, also, and uh, I have a little complaint. Okay, go ahead. She's in, she's in her dress and she's looking at the, you know, the plans and stuff. Yeah. But the last comic ended with her showing up in a flight suit. Yeah. Telling Luke to come with her. So come with yeah. me. I'm going to go change into my dress. <laughs> come watch me change into my dress. <laughs> yeah. It was like, do yeah. you were going to go on a mission, right? And then, nah, she's there wearing a dress now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was just showing off, you know, look how mm -hmm. hot I am in the flight suit. And then she just yeah. left. Season. Maybe this, maybe that goes into the the scene that's slightly after this, and then this scene goes back where she gets to be by herself before she goes and gets Luke. I don't know. That's just my best explanation, but I get it. It kind of take it. It's kind of disconnected a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but that that's that was was my thinking last night was um, was that that was when they were gonna go to the ships. And this one right here is probably before she goes and gets them. So it kind of tracks backtracks a little tiny bit. Who knows? Um, yeah, it could be. Yeah, so it could be. Yeah. So we have this right here. And I, I think I get this because they needed to, um, they could have probably done it a little bit better. But this alludes to this right here. This is so heartbreaking. Because she has, you know, she calls up the holocrons of her planet's um, tr travel tour um, holovids. Yeah, Hovids. and if you think about it, the Star Wars universe would have a lot of stuff set mm -hmm. on Alderaan and mm -hmm. you know things like that. So she would be able to, to see it mm -hmm. quite often. And, yep. Uh, yep. Constant reminder, right? Yeah, because it's, it's all set on record and stuff. Like even in um, the Han Solo trilogy, when Han has to go to Alderaan, I'm not going to give too much spoilers, but um, he um, there's always a welcome that Alderaan gives to their 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 um, visitors coming in, and so Han got to see um, Bell Organa welcome him, and it's already a pre-recorded one, but you know she's sitting on her father's lap. She's about like maybe nine or something years old there, and um, you know or something like that, and. Um, so that would even still be on record and stuff. So it makes pretty much sense because Alderaan is a was a peaceful planet. Yeah, and if you and a destination, you know when you, when you see pictures of war, right? And you mm -hmm. know uh, 
uh, London and Berlin having been bombed during World War II and all that and all the destruction. It's yeah. nothing compared to this. I mean, imagine mm -hmm. if it happened to you, right? And yeah, you know, you, you'd lose all the cities and stuff, but you'd also lose, you know, the pyramids, the Great Wall of China, Mount Everest. Yeah, you know, all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, millennia of of history, and you know, yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty. Uh, daunting almost if you if you think about it a bit closely exactly so and that just, has to like shock the system insanely exactly i mean each little tiny um you know um script bubble here you know talks about little images that she's looking at yeah and just her expression too and you could see the gleam in her eye of tears yeah she's, she's uh, close to a breakdown at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it says Alderaan is gone, but its spirit lives on in thousands of um, of expats with the um, demands of office. Leia Organa, perhaps the most prominent living Alderaanian, has yet to mourn the, her loss properly. Now, that's sad. Yeah. And, and this is something um, I'm glad they did mm -hmm. because they, they didn't really do that in the in the novels. Yeah, um, it, it it was mentioned a couple of times, and but it wasn't like this. Mm hmm. Exactly. It's just it's so heartbreaking as well, and and I think this I think having it in the comic is a lot more impactful because you get to see the visual. Yeah, mind you, you know I can still see the visual in my head reading something, but still, when you just have it illustrated for you in front of you. And, you know, in, in the Star Wars universe and stuff and how it's supposed to be, it just makes it more impactful. Yeah. And if you if you read it in the book, right, um, mm -hmm. let's say 5,000 people read the book, all of them will have a different image in their head. Exactly. While mm -hmm. a, a comic is uh, a, an, an image you, you'd all share, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So this right here, I was like a little bit in tears when I was like looking through this and reading it. So now did it skip forward? Okay. Yeah. So I think like, like what I said, I think this is just a flashback before of her, you know, being, ha being able to have time. Um, like I said, they could have put it in, in something, you know, like timed it better for that, but I get the context with the, um, what they were trying to do with the comics and stuff. Um, let me see here. I don't know why it felt like that skipped forward, but it didn't. All right. So um, so we have Wedge and Luke, and they're basically practicing in the simulators, right? That's what I remember here. Yeah, so okay. They're yeah, so they're they're practicing in a in a simulator, you know, and it's common because we see that within the X Wing books as well, or you know, that they do they have flight simulators for them to practice. And um, they keep score, they keep, you know, track of um, your response to what happens and all of that um, to make you a better pilot and to make sure you're ready to be out there. Yeah. So, and um, so we have here, and Luke gets very cocky in this. Very cocky. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're, you know, practicing in the flight simulator and stuff. And, um, you know, and he reminds him, and I think I, I pass it up the first time and I forgot to call it out, but Luke, because he's still brand new, he forgets that he he forgets to call them by their, um, you know, their designated sign, and they call him by actual name, and like Wedge has to keep on keep on correcting him, call us by our sign, and not by our name, because that yeah. puts him in more danger. Yeah. You know, if you know the person, if you know, oh, that's Wedge. Okay, let's go after this ship, kind of deal. Yeah. Mm hmm. That makes perfect sense. Mm hmm. So Luke keeps slipping up on that. So Luke was never perfect. No, Not actually, like he, he he fucks up more than most. Exactly. He's still a hero, but he still fucks up. And even even when he's Grandmaster, he still has those moments as well. And people are like, "Oh, well, he wasn't human. He's more human in the Disney in in the Last Jedi." So I can relate to him. I'm like, you have not read the lore to understand that this guy fucked up all the damn time, even as Grandmaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell are you talking about? So 
they're, they're getting their flight simulator practice in, you know, so they're always practicing. And we have the two best pilots in the fleet right now. Of course, they had to recruit new people because they lost everybody in Yavin. And that's that's friggin sad. That's that's very sad. And um, which is why Leia is flying, too. Correct. Correct. And, you know, so Luke basically tells the odds and like wedges, like never tell the curling and the odds kind of deal. So we get back to that little banter there of never give, never tell me the odds kind of deal that Han does. Yeah, and it's, wedges it's, it's, curling it's a cultural and, saying. Huh? It's a cultural uh, saying from, mm -hmm. from Corellia. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, you know, they're, they're really, um, you know, have their, their odds against them in the simulator and stuff like that. And, um, so, you know, um, let me see oh, here. Where's the one? That, that flight stick. Okay. Looks like the joystick I used when I played X Wing. And really? I wasn't aware, and wasn't aware it was uh, actually that it looked like a X Wing flight stick. Oh. Was it specifically made for that? Nope. Oh. Okay. I think it looks kind of weird, like how this looks right there. It was called a, I think it was a quick, uh, quick, quick shot python. That okay. was what it was called. So I was playing X-Wing while gripping my python. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you were enjoying gripping that python, weren't you? <laughs> okay. And so, um, so they, um, finish up their flight simulator practice here are you know they're in the midst of it and stuff still and you know of course we have luke killing you know getting the bullseye on them you know and um let's see here let's move forward here all right so here we go so here's here's the image of the flight simulators here so this is what they look like and um and they're basically, um, you know, Luke wants to keep score. How good? What you need a computer to tell you that? You know, so basically they have banter. What's up? You know what? Imagine having, so, you know, something that looks like that. Mm -hmm. And you can sit it in and play X-Wing. Oh, I know. You're like, you're like nerding out on this. Like, if only I could have a system like this to play X-Wing. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. I, uh, I found the picture of that joystick. I'm going to put it in the private chat. Okay. Want so me to I share show it? Off, yeah, I want to show uh, people my Python. Oh goodness! Okay, people, beware, beware, beware. No All trimmer right. required. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get back to. Let's see here. All right. So just to. This is <laughs> this is Diggs Python Five. <laughs> yeah, this was what I was playing X Wing and Tie Fighter with. <laughs> Just to make it new, clear, you guys, he's actually new, talking about a real joystick. <laughs> yes, new digital design, no trimmer required, <laughs> automatic centering. What's not to like? And that little blue button—that's the auto fire. It could just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Everybody's like laughing at this now. They're like, it's never a dull moment in this coffee chat. Stig is going to show us his Python. Yes. I, I am going to get a new one, though. <laughs> Pretty uh, small for Python. Ooh, he's calling you out. Well, it has automatic centering, so it doesn't need to be that big. It's precise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> quick shot laugh out loud yep. and then <laughs> someone's got a little snake there <laughs> yeah now i'm gonna get one of those and i'm gonna get a converter so, so i can uh, use it on a modern computer mm -hmm. and i'm gonna use it to play x-wing <laughs> and if i can figure it out maybe i'll stream it no trimmer required <laughs> <laughs> oh my mm -hmm. god, everybody's going nuts with this now. Yeah. <laughs> I think I lost a couple people now. You guys. <laughs> this is hilarious. I wait till we get into the X Wing comics, you guys, okay? <laughs> yeah, this oh, is uh this is the best joystick ever made for PC. Uh was it had a different one though for the Commodore 64? That one uh -huh. was smaller. 
smaller yeah. and black. Oh. Yeah, sometimes black is smaller. Weird. <laughs> I was not going there, but thank you for telling us that. <laughs> No nail clipping necessary. Ouch. Ouch. All right. Let's get back to the comic now, everyone. Uh, now that we talked about Stig's Python. Yeah. Uh, my Python is now out there on the stream. If someone wants to <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> have a look. Yeah. So we have... Um, so we have their banter, banter going on here. And basically, um, he, um, Luke is very cocky about his abilities to which. So that's what's going on here. You yep. know? So, and you can see like Wedge kind of clinching his, um, you know, pursing his lips and stuff like that, you know? And um, we still see Luke in his early cocky years. But he's never been shy about his flight ability, his pilot abilities. He just matured past the cockiness. So that's yeah, but at this point he's still cocky. Yeah, exactly. And Wedge knows better because he's a better pilot. Mm-hmm. You know, and he even has concerns because his um, you know, um, I he this his officer here says, pretty sure that one's too young to be buying anyone drinks because luke does say you know around on me blah 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 and yeah. um the same could be said about most of us who had died at yavin he's good but maybe too good cocky pilots are dead pilots and i've known more than my share i hope he learns that before he it's too late so there you go yeah luke. and look one of the rebels is a minority mm, oh yeah going back um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and look again on the next page, a female imperial officer. Correct, and I was going to get to that. She has red hair, and I was like, "Ooh, all right." Yeah. I know it's not Dying more red or anything, but still. And uh, they uh, said when they released the uh, Battlefront Two game, which has a story mode, you play as a yeah. female pilot, and they were they were saying that you, know, you did never had female imperial mm -hmm. officers and stuff before. Uh, well, yes. They did a lot of them, even in the old Marvel comics from the seventies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're full of shit. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, we've called all that bluff a long time ago. There's this is why Kathleen. This is why Kathleen Kennedy uh, never uses an enema because all the shit comes out of her mouth anyway. Oh. Yeah. TMI, dear TMI. All right. So let's go back to here. So we have um, um, Bircher right here, and he's now taking command of um, a Vader's ship here. And um, and he has the officer who is supposed to, like, assist him in getting familiar with it. And he, too, he's like, I've already studied about the ship. I already know what I need to know kind of deal. Yeah, and she's like, and oh. Insing uh, Lona, is that it? Yeah, Lona. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. And, um, but she still holds her ground with him. So, so that's pretty cool. And so, um, you know, so she, he basically, um, talks with the troopers and, you know, and asks them how, you know, how Vader ran the ship. And he, she's like basically very vigorous. And he's like, well, well, we have to do better kind of deal. And then he still says, I still want you by my side telling Mona that. So he's, he's going to try to be better than Vader <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> that's my impression about him. He's like, okay, so it's rigorous here. So let's go ahead and make it even more so. Yep. But the thing is, is that he doesn't have the force that we know of. So, you know, yeah. so there's a different factor in how, how he, between him and Vader, how that ship was ran, you know, because he can't just go and force choke someone. Sure he can. Okay. How's that? Show him who's boss. You know? In a sense, I guess, yeah. Yeah, just stormtroopers and shit is, yeah, it should be allowed. <laughs> it should be allowed. But I'm just saying Bircher, um, Bircher doesn't have the ability to force choke. That's my point. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Not like Vader. So that's what he's like, okay, so I want to tighten this down even more than what Vader was he doing. Should, so. He should use a rope. 
<laughs> I'd lasso them and pull it. No. <laughs> Just choke him with a rope in front of the other troops. Uh huh. He's like, I don't have the force, but I have this rope. <laughs> yep. And I could choke you out just the same. <laughs> and he, he's, this is what happened when, when I get bad news. Oh, we just have someone hanging up in the in the bridge just to remind. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Now we're going to evil on this. <laughs> Having the noose up. Yeah. So this is um, um, Colonel Bircher or Bircher. Um, a celebrated pilot commands an elite force of the um, TIE interceptors, the most advanced single fighter um, fighters to come out of Kuwait. Um, combined with a an almost um, pre um, preternatural sense of where his enemies lie, he enjoys a personal um, mandate from Emperor Palpatine to hunt rebels anywhere he can find them and has been given command of Darth Vader's personal ship or personal star destroyer. Vader has been reassigned. So we already went through that, but that just re just goes back to what had happened. And again, that must sting for Vader. Yeah. It's so like the other it's like the other guy is an invader. <laughs> invader of Vader's. Yep. Yeah, so we have invader. Hmm. Yeah. And so we have, um, you know, Vader being demoted and stuff. And like I said, it's it. There's a lot of weight behind that because yeah, and that uh, female imperial officer is probably ho hoping that uh, Bircher can elevate her to a higher rank. <laughs> Elevator. <laughs> Those redheads do get around. Look how Dala got promoted. Yeah, she slept with people. She yeah, she was like you know the confidant. I guess you say to Tarkin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If she had to shag someone, she did. Mm -hmm. uh, proper lady. A proper lady. And of all yeah. people, Tarkin. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's like, yeah. She's shagging him and he goes, ejaculate in my moment of triumph? <laughs> you underestimate me. Bad, but so good at the same time <laughs> you may fire at will <laughs> that's what she tells him <laughs> yep. all right now that we went like into the porno part parody of star wars let's get back to this <laughs> my penis is far too small for an effective demonstration oh my god <laughs> okay <laughs> all right all right ha ah, stig shame on you all right <laughs> Okay, so we're back at the Rebel, Rebel Fleet. Ah, breathe, Laura. Let's, let's like gather yourself here. Okay. And so she tells everybody, "Thank you for coming." And these are the people she selects for her um, her her operative here. That oh, mama who's like, I don't want to um, know anything about. Yeah, look, diversity. Yes, look at that. We, you know, we have a Twilic, you know, and what was this guy? Um, this is a tra Trandoshan, I think. Correct. Yeah, Trandoshan here. And then we have various different human humans and different, you know, like I guess you say complexions and stuff like that. There you go. Yeah. You know, we even have one that has like tattooing or marks on her face as well. There we go. And um, so basically, basically, she's like, no one can know of this, you know, whatever, you know, from this point on, you are now, um, we are rewriting your alibis right now, all of that. That's crazy. Because yeah. they need to figure out, they need to find a secure new base. They need to figure out who is giving the empire, you know, their locations where they're visiting to find and how they're being tracked and stuff. And so they need to go operative. They need to go undercover. And guess who's the leader? Leia is. Mm -hmm. In her awesome black flight suit. Look at that. And they're all in orange. Look at that. So, all right. And so, you know, we have... Um, Oh, I forgot to write her name down. I forget her name. But they're going to all be introduced here pretty soon. But she questions. So she's like, what about, you know, our... Um, you know, our rooms and our roommates and stuff. And she goes like, you are not going back until this mission is over. You're going to have no contact. 
you are not even going to be in the same rooms. You you know, no longer, I would say in a sense, you say, you know, they no longer exist. Like they have alibis right now because they can't, no one can know what they're doing. Yeah. So very, very undercover crap going on right now. And so we do have the introduction here. And so we have um, Russ Call. And then we have, um, let's see, what's her name? Um, Prith, Pr um, Prithi, Prithi from um, Chalk, Chalakta, Chalakta. And then we have um, um, Fallback um, or um, Cord, basically Cord. And then Tess from Corellia. And then um, Ardana. So we, she, we basically get all their name. And finally, we have Graham Cortez from Alderaan. And he, did, you know, basically, you know, acknowledges her because she's still their princess. She's still the, she's still their, their leader, even though they don't have a planet. I'm, uh, I'm rooting for Tess. Tess? Hello there. Okay. Oh, you really like Tess right here? Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe you would be kind of intrigued by her, but by um, Prithi. No? Or at least right here, the Twi'lek. No, that's not a cool looking Twi'lek. That, that, that's uh, something's off about that Twi'lek. Okay. You're like, no, I don't approve. Stig does not no. approve. Yeah, okay. no, not, not of that Twi'lek. Not of that Twi'lek, yeah. You're like, there's something off with her. And lo and behold, look at this. This is the introduction of the stealth X-Wings right here. Yep. They are brand new. And that's why she's dressed up in a black flight suit. And they are taken back by this and like, whoa, you know, because right now, like the Rebel Alliance, they're really low on funds and stuff like that. That was already alluded in the beginning of the comics that I forgot to touch on. But um, so oh, they're and, like, uh, oh. this uh, ties into the title of the comic. The good one. Mm -hmm. Good guys wear black. Mm hmm. Correct. Mm hmm. So we have and we see the stealth X-Wing a lot, you know, like towards legacy and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but here is the, so this is, you know, in, I guess in foreshadowing, you know, the use of it if you, in the future. So here we go. And because the, because the Rebel Alliance couldn't afford these kind of um, stealths and stuff, it's not very common during this time period. That's why we don't see it. So there you go. So they have these awesome X-Wings here, the stealth X-Wings which I really, really like. And here we go. So we get another view of them. I love the details on the top here. I've been wanting to paint an X-Wing series, like maybe, um, you know, Twin Suns X-Wings or even um, the Rogue Squadron X-Wings or Wraith Squadron X-Wings or whatever. I wanted to, you know, want to do a little series of um, X-Wings here. So here we go. And then so finally, um, Leia gets a chance to talk with Luke and Luke, you know, basically he's doubting himself here. And, um, you know, and he's like, you know, he, he's like, what is your second in command? And she's like, just because he is doesn't mean I don't need you. I need you here. You're my friend, blah, blah, blah. And his special abilities helps out as well as his, his, as his piloting. And so they're talking together. And, of course, she kind of looks back and we see some jealousy or something going on here. Yeah, so. she, she wants to bang Luke. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're like, yeah, you're all blind. Yeah, she wants to bang Luke. And then because, uh, because Luke is a new poke. Oh, geez. Here we go. For her, maybe. Because <laughs> he's mm -hmm. fairly new to the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> yep. They're like new meat. <laughs> Star Horse episode four. A new poke. <laughs> I think that we can go back and um, review these coffee chats and take everything that you've said and like start writing a porn parody for Star Wars with everything you've said, Stig. Mm. <laughs> well, mm. attack, <laughs> attack of the bones. There we go. Okay. And so we are now back at the Falcon with Han and Chewie. And, um, you know, well, as um, per Mom Mothma's orders, here's the next rendezvous. So they, he, they're, you know, they're on the mission, you know, to, I don't know, like scope out the galaxy and stuff to see what's going on. That's that's what I'm guessing. But they are sent to a planet. So, and um, they have to set in, they have a false um, ID and they, they are under the name Thralls. 
Yeah, and uh, well, he, Han is also he has an, his own uh, um, agenda as well. He wants to spend some Correct. money on the black market. He's taken advantage of this mission, Mon Mothma has him on. That it's just plain and simple. He's taken advantage of it. So he's still following orders, but he he knows places very well to where he can have a little bit of fun, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. You know, and that just fits him to a T. And so, you know, they get they send off their their false their false ID and they get their um their um landing platform and their clearance and all that. And lo and behold, they're on Coruscant. Because at that time frame, Coruscant is like Imperial City at the time, right? And um, yeah. that is total control of the Emperor. Oh, so yeah. no rebel's going to make it on the planet without being undercover. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this yeah. is a gorgeous look at Coruscant, too. Exactly. And I, I shared this on Twitter, but I, I edited it to where I got the, the text out of there. So without the text, it looks even more. I didn't, and I even took the bottom one off there too. So here we go. So of course, off the Imperial Imperial Center. So they're in the and heart of Imperial Han is, territory. Han wants to spend his money some way. Exactly, some way, somehow, and this will be coming up. So three and four will be not this weekend, but the weekend after. We're going to have a special talking EU um, with Lethal Lightning discussing Jason Solo did nothing wrong. So this should be an interesting topic, <laughs> very interesting topic to talk about. So if you guys are into Jason Solo and you know all his ideals and why he turned Sith and stuff like that, we are going to talk about that. So, and it should be a fun topic to say the least. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at the chat. Just call her Indian girl. Yeah, she looked like she's, you know, Indian, Asian, Asian, Indian type person. The, pr the yeah, preaching? She, she even looks the name. like uh, Depa Bilaba. Yeah, that's bit. another one too. I was like, she's very similar to that. Very similar looking. Star horse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this went downhill with the the parodies that we've you were um, dishing out give her a minute <laughs> elevator going up so it's it um is it the force i feel never mind laugh out loud let's see no, here it's his star destroyer the penetrator oh god <laughs> i'm like mother like daughter and um just call her indian girl i just went to that one let's see here um Blue Twilight and Stig doesn't approve of the how that Twilight looks. So. No, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. Not Ayla Secura at all. Not. All right. Well, I don't think she's supposed to look like Ayla Secura. Then she's lost. Then she is lost. Then you are lost. All right. Um, that's what Stig has been the whole time. What have you been the whole time? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Lethal Lightning is number one Jason Solo fan. Yes, he is. And so that's that's going to be a fun discussion because many, you know, um, he has his, his I wouldn't say theory. He's He basically sees Jason did no wrong, even turning into dark, Darth Cadus. Yeah, he, he's quite a adamant about it too mm -hmm, exactly so i can't wait to get on here and discuss that with him discuss jason's lore going over that and um so it should be fun it should be really really fun maybe it'll change people's minds on the direction jason decided to take and that if he was right or wrong so this should be an introduce interesting discussion because even if you read Darth um the um darkness trilogy you know jason um you know, there's a loot, there's things alluded to Jason's thinking, just like Vader and Palpatine, um, you know, of the Empire era. But then he also starts seeing visions and he also sees um like a vast war that's not never ending between the Chiss and Twilight. And so he takes action. And so yeah. even that right there, you know, with the future of him reasoning why he decides to go dark um um as a Sith Lord, he thinks he's doing everything to protect not only his daughter but the galaxy. Also, so. he, he he chokes out Ben. Oh yeah, which is uh, Anakin foreshadowing, mm -hmm. almost. You know. Yeah, 
Because yeah, he, so- he minds he minds wipe swipe um, wipes Ben a little bit too. Yeah, and she and he uh, makes this lady brain damaged. Correct. Yeah, it was it really Tenniel Ka? Yeah, Tenniel Ka or whatever Tenniel. Yeah, um, the grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, it kind of induced a stroke or something in her brain. Mm-hmm. And uh, she ends up being a vegetable, which is yeah. uh, not the Jedi way. No, it's not. No, it's not. So that there, there, like in Dark Nest, you know, like some people are off with the the Killix, the bug species, and I get it. Um, but there are some stories, like there's instances in there, like I really love the R two D two revealing Padme to the family, and that's all I'm gonna say. You have to at least you know read it for that. And um, well, then now you have, just spoiled it. I didn't spoil a lot. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't because I'm not saying what was revealed. Yeah, that's true. So, and um, so you have to read it at least for that. But then also too, Jason, you see him start turning in that series. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's when it really starts. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, he's back from his five year hiatus and exploring the forests and forest societies. And then he's got, you know, influenced by Vergere and the, the torture from the Yuzhan Vong. And so there's a lot of shit going on, you know, for him. And um, yeah, so it's 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 a very compelling story. So I can't wait to get Lethal here in the hot seat next Thursday morning so we can discuss all of that. That should be fun. So I, you know, I want I encourage you guys to come and listen. And then the following Thursday, we'll jump back into the comics. So it'll be a little bit of talking EU live um, rather than me doing talking EU lore. So and it'll all be mainly with Jason Solo, talking about Jason Solo and Darth Cadis. So that should be fun. So with these comics, Stig, the first two, what do you think about them? Uh, great artwork. Yeah. Uh, still just in the setup phase, though. The yeah. Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's set up Vader situation, uh, the Rebels, and uh, Han Solo. Mm-hmm. You know? And... Um, so so far, no, nothing's really happened mm-hmm. except for uh, setup. But it's yeah. been awesome. You get to see Leia. Leia's kind of been been shining. Uh, you know, so, so far Leia's been the most interesting one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a lot more of Leia, and even with her mourning and stuff. Yeah. A lot so, more. Uh, in my opinion, Leia stole the show in these mm-hmm. two comics. Um, yeah. But I'd, I'd give I'd give both of them a, an eight eight out of ten mm-hmm. so far. Okay, for a yeah. great start off, a great setup. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. And then these next two, like I said, when we get back in the comics, we'll get into three and four of the um, shadow the the shadow of Yavin here, and you know this cover right here. You know you have. Um, Kenobi and you have um, Han and them and stuff. And so I think it looks pretty cool, but um, I'm excited to get into further into the story. Um, there's a lot going on. There's going to be a lot going on. A lot of detail, yeah. a lot of fun, a lot of ven- adventure. Um, you know, this, I would say too, you know, there's more, you know, a lot more character development too. You know, in yes. all aspects. Uh, I do believe there's a, there's a cool Luke and Leia thing happening soon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, which I'm not gonna spoil, but I think mm-hmm. everyone watching will like it. Yeah, yes. Oh my god! Like I said, I nerded out just like looking at the pages, not reading it, but looking at the pages when we were, you know, planning this. And um, so I think you guys will enjoy them as well. So, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and close here. It looks like we're um, we're running a little bit early today. This today, but that's okay. Um, so Stig, tell us where we can find you. Like, are you going to be on any channels this week or the rest of the remaining week? Uh, no, uh, mm-hmm. I don't do that much YouTube anymore. It's, okay. uh, I'm usually on your channel or uh, Sporking's channel on Mondays okay. talking about the Game of Thrones books. And sometimes right. I'll, I'll, I'm on Geek Blend playing trivia. Yeah. And then we have that, what, once a month um, EU talk with um, on Open Airlock Policies, Tim's channel? So will you be yeah. on there with us? Uh, if I'm awake, uh, okay. he tends to start at four or five in the morning my time. So it's 
Yeah. It, it's kind of, it, it's always a maybe thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and you have book talk this. Uh, That's right. Okay, so I'm setting up the stream today. So after I'm done here, I'm going to grab a bite to eat and start setting up the stream. So I will advertise it on Twitter. Um, but yes, we have, we are finally um, going to review Revan novel. And that's Saturday at noontime. So it's going to be like, like maybe up to two hours of going over the novel, the lore within the novel, talking about Revan and all the setup within the Old Republic as well. And it should be fun. I know that Revan, because of Kotor, is a very popular character. That's why this, like, what, two weeks ago when people are like, who's Revan? I'm like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> I mean, I didn't play um, Kotor, but I know of him. You know, and I know he's very popular. So what the hell are you guys talking about? You know, um, so we're reviewing the novel and that's going to be Saturday at noontime. So I'll have a panel here. Stig may or may not be on, um, depending on if he finishes it. No, I haven't even started. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing Visions of the Future. And, yeah, that's right. Uh, I finished, uh, I also finished the uh, the two MedStar books. Okay. Yeah, he's, um, he's you know, got his little his little commitment on books that he's picked up that he had to finish. So I, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. I, I, I just didn't want to add another book. Yeah. So. Cause I know you're swimming in literature right now because you have other books outside of Star Wars you're also reading. Um, oh yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I, maybe I could read Revan though. Uh, how many pages is it? 400? Ah. That's going to the, be pushing it. Yeah, the Audible is unabridged, and it's 10 hours. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, no problems. And then, but, you know, I'll, we'll st I'll sit with Stig, and we'll plan the next EU book review um, that we should do. And, um, you know, so I'll have a panel here. We'll discuss, you know, that era, that timeline, Revan novel. It should be really fun. Um, I really enjoyed the book, but I'm not going to reveal anything right now. That's for Saturday. And so come join. It should be fun. Um, if you haven't read Revan, then hopefully, I mean, we talk full out about the lore. So if you don't want spoilers, then I mean, I encourage you to come anyways to listen. Um, but if you don't like spoilers, then, you know, that I'm just giving you a warning. Um, me, I don't mind, especially when someone's talking about a book and I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Okay, I don't care. Because once you get into the book, because we can't talk about every single scene, right? Um, and every single detail and stuff. So, um, you know, if I hear someone talk about a book, I'm like, oh, I really want to read that. I want to hear more. And then I'm going to pick up the book. Because once you start reading it, you get to experience it in your own way. You know what you really, really should do, though? You start playing KOTOR. Yeah, I know. Because now we have a mouse, too. Yes. Yes. Almost there. I'm, I'm my graduation date was given to me. It's on the 26th of May. And then, so I'll have more time to do a lot, like more lore, get to play games and all that. So, um, yeah. So maybe I'll just, you know, pick oh, up. Oh, uh, oh, um, a little announcement for, for, for everyone watching. Okay. Uh, GOG, GOG com, which is my favorite, yeah. uh, gaming store basically. Yeah. Uh, they, they sell games digitally and uh you know that they're made to work on modern computers yeah and uh you know because there's a lot of old games they are right now having a star wars sale okay uh all of the star wars games that they have which is all of the old ones and mm -hmm. some of the new ones uh are 65 percent off Ooh, guys need to check that out yeah so if you want the Jedi Knight games or KOTOR or whatever it is, they even have the Force Unleashed games on it. Yeah. So if, if you want those, they're on sale right now. Yeah, I, I think I've seen you share shared the link. And so I'll yeah. go ahead and share it as well. So if you guys are interested in like exploring a new Star Wars game or what have you, then go check it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. As for me, again, we have literature review on Revan novel Saturday at noontime. Um, tonight, I don't think I'll be able to be on um, Queen's Council, but that's tonight on Lorena's channel. So please, despite if I'm going to be there or not, go head on over there and support the ladies. And um, this week, I don't really have nothing going on the rest of this week other than the book review. 
and I am not on toxic femme until after my graduation. So I won't be returning until the end of May. Um, and I think that's it. So coffee chat every Thursday morning, whether it be on comics or talking EU. And again, next Thursday should be fun. So if you guys really love Jason Solo, come on in. Lethal Lightning will probably break that shit down. So I look forward to that. So again, thank you guys for coming. And do you have anything else to add, Stig, before we close? No. Uh, if you get a, a Python joystick, though, Remember uh -huh. to grip it firmly and press the center for the quick shot. Okay. That's how you get the quick shot, if you press the center while gripping it firmly. All anyway, right. Well, that, that's there the, goes. Yep. All right. And you guys, please stay and to watch the whole thing through. I have a new outro, so I'm very proud of this outro. So thank you, guys, again. And please watch this whole outro. It's pretty cool. I think I did a great job on putting it together. And may the force be with you. And I'll see you guys on Twitter and what have you. So thank you guys again for supporting the channel. Another happy landing.